Hey, so if you open up your, with Alt-Z, your GeForce Experience stuff, then you can click on the Performance tab. And when you open up the Performance tab, you get this thing. Now, this was actually, I think, added in fairly recently. I don't know exactly when. I hadn't looked in GeForce Experience in a while. I think it had been available for beta for months now, but uh, it's in the official launch now whenever I updated GeForce Experience. And it's got some cool stuff. We've got performance monitoring, uh, to, and you can add that in as a performance overlay in games, which is kind of neat. And you can choose where to put it and whether you want the advanced stuff with all the stuff or just basic or frame counters, all of that. That's neat. But what seems a little more interesting here is this performance tuning and that you can enable automatic tuning, which is basically a one-click overclock. So, can you just download an update for GeForce Experience, click the button and get free performance on your GPU? Well, let me talk about the experience that I've had with it. I'm gonna compare it to how, um, <clears throat> how much I was able to do in MSI Afterburner myself, and I'll compare it to like, you know, did it actually get me noticeable performance games in a game? Uh, all of that kind of stuff. So, first, uh, let's talk about uh, my GPU. So I have an RTX 2070. I don't have any other GPUs to test this on. So I am curious in the comments section, if you guys test this out on yours, how did it work out for you? Anyway, so for me, what it was able to do is, well, first of all, I slid all these over to the far right. So if you're not sure what all these things do, uh, voltage maximum, power maximum, temperature target, you're basically sliding these things to the right and saying, give it all the juice, give it all the power. I don't care if it heats up a bit. I left my fan speed at automatic. Then I click the automatic tuning button. Now, when I did that, it then launched a scan, which took a while. I think it took at least 20 minutes or so. I didn't time it exactly for it to complete the scan. Now, I will also mention that the scan failed. I've tried this a few times and it did fail for me a couple of times, although it was able to complete a number of times as well. So if you click the button and it doesn't give you a last scan result and tell you a number here, then it probably didn't actually complete the scan. And I think your tuning will be turned back off. So if that happens to you, I'd recommend just making sure you're not using your PC at all. Just like leave the computer, click the enabled automatic tuning button, make sure everything is closed on your computer and just leave the thing alone while it finishes it and it should hopefully finish. But again, let me know in the comments if you're not able to get this thing to run. Um, so it does take a while and it basically, I think, slowly steps up your GPU clock, checks kind of for stability, does it again, does it again. And this is similar to what you actually do when you're overclocking a GPU by hand. You make small increases to the performance, um, to the clock speed, you check it for stability, and then you make small, small improvements again, and you keep doing that. And once you've done that for your GPU clock, you do it for your memory clock, and this seemed to do that as well. So my default memory clock, I believe was around 7,000 megahertz on my card, and it's now sitting at 7,200 with this turned on. So I think it did a 200 megahertz boost on that, although it doesn't tell you here on your scan results. It does tell you a plus 95 megahertz here, at least that's what I got, and that's talking about the GPU clock. So how does that compare to what I'm able to get with MSI Afterburner? Well, first of all, I'll admit that I'm not like an expert overclocker. I overclock a little bit every now and then just to tinker around, but I'm not an expert. But using MSI Afterburner, 100 megahertz is where I'm, I'm stable. I've gone as high as 120 or even 150, but I will occasionally see artifacting issues or get an occasional crash in certain situations. So how does this compare? Well, I think I could get a slightly more aggressive overclock with Afterburner, but this is the limit to where it's 100% stable in every situation I've ever seen, maybe a little bit under that. So I'd say this is actually good news and this is exactly how they should do it. I think it would be a mistake to have this, even when you slide everything to the right, to have this get you an overclock that might not be 100% stable. Because this is just a button in their GeForce experience where a lot of people who use this might have no idea what overclocking is or how it works and have no experience doing it themselves, how to 
understand that if you're getting artifacting issues in a game, it might be the overclock's fault. If games are crashing all of a sudden, it might be the overclock's fault. People might not realize that if this is just a, a button they pressed in their GeForce experience, right? So I think it's absolutely correct to err on the side of making this thing um, actually work like easily and well and stably. And I think that's where it locked in here. This, this I, I trust will be 100% stable in any situation I throw at it. Okay, and again, it got me a 200 megahertz memory clock. I think I've been able to boost my memory by more like three or 400 stably. So again, it, it's giving me performance for free just at the click of a button. Not as aggressive as it could be, but it should be absolutely stable. Okay, so um, did it actually give me a noticeable improvement in games? Well, I fired up the Red Dead Redemption 2 benchmark and I ran it um, initially, before I enabled the automatic tuning, then I clicked the automatic tuning button, let it run its scan. Like I said, it took 20 minutes or so. And I ran the Red Dead Redemption 2 benchmark again, and I got about a 2.1 frames per second average improvement, which is actually more than I expected off of such a small overclock. Now, would I really feel that difference while gaming? Probably not. But for just at the click of a button, getting an extra two frames per second out of my GPU, cool, awesome. So overall, I think it's a great thing that they added this to the GeForce experience to make overclocking and getting some free performance available to a, a larger segment of the market and the population than are willing to download something like MSI Afterburner and tinker around themselves. So, uh, you know, download an update, click a button, free GPU performance. That's as close to like, you know, downloading more RAM as you might actually get, right? You, you just click a button, here's some free performance. I think this is great. I also like that they're improving their performance overlay. And in general, I think just giving us more features in the GeForce Experience um, program is a good thing. Uh, and um, I've really got nothing to complain about. Like I said, um, how did it work out for you guys in the, uh, let me know in the comment section. I do read every comment on my channel and I uh, try to respond to as many as I can. Okay, I hope you guys have an excellent day.